How many times has someone walked up to you and handed you their camera and said, hey, can you take a picture of me? This is the most common photo scenario. It's a picture of people, which is known as a portrait. So where do you place the people inside the frame? You need to use the rule of thirds. It's super easy to use this rule. Imagine that you draw two vertical lines at the one third points in your frame, and then you draw two horizontal lines that are also at the one third point. Typically, you want to place your subject on either the left one-third of the photo or the right one-third of the photo. You also don't want your subject just facing straight towards the camera, but have them facing one way or the other. Now, let's place my body on the left third and get your subject to face their body inwards into the photo and then look at the camera. It's a very nice placement. But what you don't want is to have your subject on the left one-third facing out of the photo. The reason for that is because your viewer's eye will follow what your subject is looking at and your viewer's eye will leave the photo and it will never come back. So place your viewer either on the left third or the right third. Now let's talk about where the face goes because this is the most important part. Do not place your face in the middle of the photo. You don't want a shot where the face is in the middle and then the second half of the photo is sky. You want your face to be on the top one third line, preferably where two of the third lines intersect. This can be on the left or it can be on the right. Now let's say that you're standing in front of a viewpoint of some type. You want to do a second thing now, and that is to place the most important element on the other third line. So here's what I mean. Let's say I'm standing in front of a lavender field and there is one stone house out in the middle of that lavender field. You want to place that stone house on the right third of the photo. So I'll be on the left third, I'm looking at the camera, the stone house is on the right third, now you have a perfectly composed photo. You want to avoid anything that is busy in the background from protruding out from especially the head of your subject. Let's take that same photo and say that I was on the right third, right in front of the stone house, and not only am I blocking the stone house, but there are elements of it that are coming out from the sides of my head. It doesn't look good. And this is especially true with telephone poles and trees. So you wanna make sure that there's nothing behind your subject's head that is going to become a distraction in the photo. Let's say that your subject was not standing in front of a viewpoint, but was just standing in front of a non-textured background. Now this is a time where you don't need to apply the rule of thirds, and you can in fact place your subject in the middle of the frame, ensuring that the face is on the top third line. So place the face on the top third line, put your subject right in the middle, and now this is a symmetrical looking portrait, and this really works. Now here's the real secret sauce with portraits, and this is how you go from an amateur photo to a pro photo. It involves blurring out the background so that the face of your subject is nice and tack sharp, and the background is completely blown out and blurry. This is how you make your photos look pro. Now the way to do this is very easy. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, there is usually an option inside your camera app called Portrait. Use that and it will blur out the background. If you're shooting with a digital camera, it's also easy to do this. It's really just two steps. Step number one is to choose aperture priority on your camera and adjust your f-stop number, which is that tiny little dial, to the smallest number. Your smallest number may be f2.8, it could be f3.5, you just want it to be the smallest one you've got. Then you want to zoom in your lens to the maximum amount of zoom. And when you do those two things and ensure that you are focusing on the face of your subject, then the background will be completely blurry and your portrait is going to look professional. So here's your recipe. Step number one, move your subject around so that your subject will be on one of the third lines in the frame. Step number two, adjust your frame so that any interesting elements that are in the background will also be on one of the third lines. And step number three is the lighting. Let's say that you were taking a photo of me and there is a sunset behind me. The sky is very bright and your camera is going to read that very bright sky and it's going to make the frame darker. So that means that I'm going to turn out to be silhouetted. I will be dark, but the sky behind me will be bright. One way of compensating for that is to bring the camera closer and to use the flash on your camera to illuminate your subject. 
Another way of compensating for it is to move your subject so that the light is on your subject's face. This is the far better way to go. You can use natural light from a window and one thing that works very well for that is to take a bed sheet and hang it over the window. This diffuses the light and makes it soft. Another way of doing it is with artificial lights like I'm using here. I have a very bright light on camera right. This is known as the key light. This is the strongest light. Then there's a less bright light over here, which is called the fill light. It just kind of fills in the shadows uh, on, on the dark side of the face. And this is how you can do it very easily using artificial light, even using lamps inside your home. So let's recap your recipe. Step number one, move your subject using the rule of thirds. Step number two, move your camera and use the rule of thirds to capture any interesting elements that are in the background. And step number three is ensure that the lighting is going to be correct on your subject and that your subject is not backlit, like having them stand in front of a sunset. That's the basic recipe for taking portraits, which are the most common photo that you're going to take during your lifetime. My name is Tim Shields and I'm a professional photographer. If your photos are turning out blurry and you don't understand depth of field, or if you struggle with finding good compositions, then I would like to invite you to pick up a copy of the photo cookbook right here on this page. Because inside it, I'm going to give you 30 recipes that allow you to easily take photos that are sharp, that are in focus, and that have creative and balanced compositions. Now, if you look at the world's greatest chefs, they use recipes to create award-winning dishes. A recipe is a set of step-by-step -step instructions, and if you follow their same recipes, you can create their same award-winning dishes. And when it comes to your photography, you can follow my recipes to take tack-sharp photos with creative compositions using simple and easy camera settings. So this idea of using recipes for photography is something that the pros use, but it really hasn't trickled down to the intermediate and beginner level. I used to think that having an expensive camera would result in better pictures, but it's not about your camera. It's about following a step-by-step -step recipe that will result in balanced compositions that are sharp from the foreground to the background, which you can only get by knowing how to manipulate depth of field. Same thing with pictures of sunsets. If your sunset photos end up with a washed out sky or the foreground is too dark, that's because you didn't follow a step-by-step -step recipe to take the perfect sunset picture. You might be thinking that you just want to understand camera settings better, and I've got you covered. The photo cookbook includes my own camera settings cheat sheet so that you can see what happens to depth of field when you close down the aperture, or what happens to sharpness when you increase the ISO. Or you might be thinking that what you care about most is compositions. I have you covered for that too. The photo cookbook covers eight different types of compositions that you can use when you are in the field, including leading lines, balance and symmetry, foregrounds, and my all-time favorite, stacking the rules of composition. This photo cookbook is pretty much my life's work when it comes to photography, and it's packed full of knowledge bombs. If that sounds good to you, and you want to get more attention for your photos on social media, and you want to win photo contests, and you want to sell your photos, or you just want to take pictures that you are proud of, then pick up a copy of the photo cookbook.